Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Lori, welcome back. Um, I have a quick video that I just thought would be a fun idea to put out there. I get a lot of questions about shopping at the Goodwill outlets or the bins, and I am a regular at the bins here at my uh, local Goodwill outlet in New Hampshire. So I thought I would go over what my essentials are. I wanna start doing more videos like just reseller life daily tidbits for you. Um, so this is just gonna be a quick 10, 15 minute video, and I'm gonna go over my essentials for shopping at the Goodwill outlets. I think there are a lot of videos um, out there about information and techniques and strategies while you're shopping, but I just find it fascinating how all, sorry, my head's like out of the frame here, how so many resellers have different strategies for how we process our stuff when we get home and that's sort of fun behind the scenes. So I figured I would go through and show you first off what I never leave the house without when I'm on my way to the bins. So first off, I have a um, crossbody bag that I always have to wear so my hands are free. I make sure it's not like a very fancy crossbody bag. This is just a tried and true like Steve Madden that my girlfriend gave me. It's gotten so much mileage out of it. I have gotten so much mileage out of it. Um, it definitely pushes up against the bins a lot when I'm shopping. So you wanna make sure you're not bringing like one of your best bags to the bins. But in my opinion, it is essential to have a crossbody because if you have a, when you have your carriage, you don't wanna leave, um, you don't wanna leave your purse in the cart or carriage. So um, always have it on you. I also make sure that I always have something to eat. I usually bring like a bar with me. Um, I always bring water. Um, sometimes I don't bring my water inside, but I kind of have it all the way up on the ride. It's about a 40 minute ride for me. So water, a snack. Um, usually I try to make sure my snack has protein. Um, my crossbody bag. I actually don't even bring my wallet. I bring about $40 in cash, just in case. I bring my license and I bring my credit card. And um, that's all. Uh, maybe some chapstick is nice because it gets really dry or gum or whatever. So that's what I bring. I also always make sure that I don't leave the house without my, I'm just gonna be loud, without my Ikea bag. So whatever bag you have that you can bring that's big, that you can toss a lot of things in. What I do when I'm at the bins is I keep my um, Ikea bag in the front part of the cart. And so as I'm shopping, if I get an item that I'm like really excited about, I put it in the bag. Like, so inside the bag goes my, like these are definite pieces. So I toss those in the bag as I'm shopping. Then anything that's a maybe, I leave in the big portion of the cart until my bag gets full and then I swap and I put the big bag in the cart. Um, sometimes I'll put a blanket over it. At my bins, we really don't have an issue. When I've shopped in New Hampshire, I mean, I take that back. When I've shopped at the ones in Queens in New York, everyone had blankets. So there are a lot of blankets that I see that go over the carts in New Hampshire. I don't tend to use them unless I have something that I'm like worried someone's gonna take and then I bury it to the bottom of my cart and I put a blanket over it. So my Ikea bag has all of my definite yeses um, and as I go through things in between table rotations and bins rotations, I'll go through and things either go in the bag or they stay out of the bag. Then um, once I cash out, I just, you know, everything goes in the bag at that point or whatever fits in the bag and whatever doesn't. Usually I may pick up a bin at the bins to toss things in. Then I come home and I've talked about my little journal many times, but um, of all the things that I've tried over this past year of reselling, uh, using this journal has been the one thing that I feel has remained extremely consistent. So when I come home, I will write down what I got. And this, this goes for savers, goodwill, the bins, whatever. And I try to get as descriptive as possible. So I'll just show what I did for today. Today is September 6th and I went to the bins today. So I will come home with my list and it is a mess as you can see. But over here in this column, I always write down the size um, of what the item is. And sometimes I try to categorize it, but I don't, it's never that great. Like today I started out because I found some cool vintage pieces. Um, then I have a little section where I write some of the men's stuff. 
Um, on this side, these are just little notes on things that I bought for family members that aren't going to be factored in here. And I love this part because this is where I research things um, that I haven't already searched comps for at the bins. So while I'm at the bins, when you're waiting for a new rotation or a new bin to come out, everybody at our bins, we stand around, you know, the imaginary rectangle waiting for the bin to come in. So what I'll do is after I go through my Ikea bag, I may pull a piece out and just like, for example, I'll just use this because I grabbed this tie today. It's a Brooks Brothers tie. So I might look at that right before I go over and wait. And while everybody's chit-chatting, sometimes I chat with my bins friends or other times I will just look up comps while I'm there. So if I have a piece that I'm questioning, like do I want to take this home? Are the comps good? Is this worth it? I'll look it up as I'm waiting for the rotation. So I'm not like wasting time just standing there, but I know I want to keep my place. And I will decide whether or not that Brooks Brothers tie is worth taking home um, if I have questionable pieces. I don't always look up comps at the bins, um, but things that I'm not sure about, I will look up. And then I'll go back to my cart after the rotation comes out and I grab what I want and I go back to my carriage. I will go through and pull things that I don't want, toss them back in, and then put up new things in my Ikea bag. So your phone is obviously essential at the bins. I mean, I need that very much. Sometimes I'll share my closet while I'm waiting for a rotation. I'm pretty much all business when I'm there. I'm, I'm quiet, I'm in the zone, and that's how I work it. So when I come home, I, I do my notes, and as I'm doing my notes, I just throw things on the floor in piles next to me. So the way that I do my piles is like, I'll have a shoe pile. Today I got a pair of Clarks and a pair of Toms, like very um, low key, not great day for shoes. So I will put those in one pile. I have a pile of lights, things that I'm gonna wash, <laughs> and then I have a pile of darks. So I'll throw my darks to my right, my lights to my left, and then I have a pile of items that I am not planning on washing. Everything gets steamed clean. I also have um, a spray that I use. I can't think of the name of it. I know Ann Eckhart um, recommended it and I bought it and I love it. I wanna say it's like no odor. Uh, it's just this very neutral spray and I love it. I've tried Febreze and that's just like too heavy for me. Um, so this stuff I love and it kind of neutralizes any odors um and anyway so what i'll put in this bag for example this was a fun pickup i've been having fun finding vintage stuff and my bins don't tend to have a ton of designer pieces so i'm often pulling like eclectic pieces or they do have some fun um some fun vintage things so today i found these um, and they did have some issues but i found these pendleton uh, wool plaid. I thought it was a, a midi skirt when I first looked and then I realized that they were just a wide leg pant, women's pant. They do have in the back um, a couple issues with looks like moth holes that somebody has already tried to stitch and repair, but I still thought that they were worth the pickup. Now these I will not put in the wash. So that's an example of something that I won't wash. Um, the silk tie I'm not going to wash. Um, I also got... <laughs> This American Girl doll, and you know that I used to work at American Girl doll, as sad as she is, a lot of people buy these dolls for parts. So um, uh, for another day, I'm gonna definitely do an American Girl haul, but, but uh, discussion. But before it was called American Girl, it was called The Pleasant Company. So anytime you're out shopping and you find a doll that's marked with Pleasant Company on the back of her neck instead of American Girl, it means she's one of the older dolls. And there are a lot of people who um, restore the doll, so they'll buy vintage pieces for parts. So I'll probably still get $25 or $30 for that doll. Um, this is another example of something that I'm not gonna wash. I found this like, this is just like this gorgeous silk kimono piece um, pullover. I'm gonna try this on, it's gorgeous. Um, so I have a pile of things that I'm not gonna wash that just go directly to steaming. Then, um, once I have my piles, I'm usually gross when I get home from the bins. I never shower before I go to the bins. I always wear comfy clothes. And then when I come home, I write everything down. I figure out my cost per item. So in today's case, 
I had 41 items and I spent $33. I had 26 pounds, my bins are $1.39 per pound. So I spent 30, what did I just say, $33 on 26 pounds. Yes, that's what I did, but I got 41 items. So my cost per item on this particular trip averaged like 81 cents around there, which is incredible. I didn't realize I had done that well and I got some really nice pieces in today's haul. Like nothing crazy, but just good stuff that will bring in a good amount of money. So I estimate that on average, I profit about $20 per item on average. Like I got an Ibex sweater that will probably bring me $55 and I got like a top shop skirt that will probably bring me 18, but on average, I clear about $20. So if you take that 41 items, let's call it 40, I'm gonna say I'll probably make about $800 on this haul. That is very, very general, but that's kind of in my brain how I, how I just like do my very rough estimates. So once I get this done, I put my first load of laundry in and I shower because I am disgusting by this point. I spent a lot of time sorting, shopping, recording, researching. So I'll come home, I'll put my first load in and then I shower. And then as I get ready afterwards, I, I monitor like what's going in the dryer. Some things I only put in for 10 minutes. I pull them out, I hang them. I like, you know, I then I start the preparation process and I usually do the laundry right away. Um, and then I'm good to go. At that point, I start listing and I try to list as much as possible, as fast as possible, because you know I wanna get back to the bins as soon as I can. So the faster I list, the faster I can go shopping again. So. I hope you found this helpful. It's just my little ritual at the Goodwill Outlets. It works for me. I have a lot of fun with it. It's really important that I write everything down as soon as I get home. For some people that might be entering it in a spreadsheet, um, whatever your system is, I just thought I would share with you my little system and I hope it helps. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give me a thumbs up on the way out if you'd like to and consider subscribing to my channel. I do Goodwill Outlet hauls. I do what sold videos. I'm trying to mix it up with a couple um, reseller day in the life sorts of things, organization tips and all that fun stuff. So I really appreciate everybody who tunes into my videos. Um, that's all for tonight. Have a wonderful weekend and thanks so much for watching. Bye.